much. I was told that most of you would be able to understand English, which is great, but I'm not sure if you can all understand Scottish, so that might be a little bit more difficult, um, but hopefully at least some of you will, will be able to follow what, what I'm doing here today, and hopefully as well, um, I know a few people who speak Korean and English very well, and they will subtitle this talk later, so um, you will get something from it if you look it up on, online. So I was asked to do a little speech on drive. You could also call it motivation, determination, hunger, um, but drive is the, is the word that I've chosen to use. And um, to me, it's a very, very interesting subject. I've been fortunate to travel the world a little bit. I've uh, grown up in Scotland, lived there most of my life, uh, lived the last number of years in the US and in Canada, and now I find myself living in Seoul, South Korea. So I've seen a lot of different places, I've met a lot of different people, and I've found um, some interesting things about drive, about motivation, about determination. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about that and these other, other points here that are, are on this uh, slide. I come from a background of uh, working in sales before I became a, a football manager or a soccer coach, depending on how you want to call it. And when I was in sales, I had a, a desire, a vision to become a football manager to become a soccer coach and that seemed pretty much impossible. Um, even well-meaning people who liked me a lot, maybe even loved me a lot, told me, look, that's not possible. They told me it wouldn't be easy to get the qualifications I needed, it wouldn't be possible to become a soccer coach or a football manager. Um, but I had a different opinion and I had something inside me that drove me towards that, that goal. So when I was waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning to fly to London to do some sales meetings, I wasn't really thinking about the drudgery of that. I was thinking about the vision and where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do next. And so that's something that I believe is going to be vitally important to you or to the people that you have to give or help find that motivation. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. So basically, when I was in sales, um, I worked for a software company and I had the hope and the dream that by the age of 30 years old, I could retire from that job and do something that I basically loved doing, do something that I was passionate about doing. And I had a plan, which we'll talk about, and I had a lot of reasons why I wanted to make that happen, which we'll talk about. And I was fortunate enough at that age of 30 to become a, a, a football manager, to become a soccer coach. And I was the only coach and have been the only coach to go from the lowest level of soccer in America, actually starting off at under 12 girls, which hard to get much lower than that, to go through every level from um, the youth all the way to the professional, all the way to the very highest level of professional soccer in the United States and in, in Canada. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that, but more importantly, I want to talk to you about the people I've met. I've met some really, really high achievers. I've met some people who've played in World Cup finals, I've, in the tournament, not the actual final. I've met people who've played in the Premiership, the Champions League, the absolute pinnacle of their profession. I've met CEOs with incredible experience and incredible success, and I've found a couple things um, that really separates them from other people. And it's really interesting to me because most people think that those who are successful are those who were born lucky, who had something good happen to them, or they were born into the right situation or the right family. But the people that I've found who, who are successful, that's not the case. That's not the case at all. In life, there's people who are high achievers, and there's others who are just seeking comfort and an easy life. There's people who do things at a very high level, who are playing on the field, making things happen, and then there's others who are just sitting in the stands, spectating. Um, and as it goes on, what I've found is there's certain people who look, and look around and blame other people for where they are in life, and there's other people who take responsibility for where they are and where they want to get to. The moment you want to have drive, the moment you find that is the moment when you look in the mirror and you say, where I am right now is because of me. It's not because of my boss. It's not because of my company. It's not because of the economy. It's not because of my work colleagues. It's not because of my education. It's not because of my parents. It's because of me. And when you do that, you'll find the motivation is so powerful because now for the first time, you're the person who can do something about it. If you think it's someone else's fault for where you are, you're never going to change it, ever. There's so many people in life, they're waiting for this great opportunity to come along. But it never does. 
You go to the graveyard, you'll find the richest place in the world, the place with all these ideas, with all these inventions, with all these opportunities that never happened. But everybody here has been born with talent. I believe probably an abundance of talent. But you're scared to use it because what happens if you fail? What happens if you actually try and do something special and you fall short and you fail? So most people don't try. Most people don't have any real ability to take on the critics. And what I want to talk to you about here is some simple things that will allow you, if you've never had it before, to have drive. If you've had it before and lost it, to get it back. If you're working with people and managing people and you have to find motivation and drive for them, how to help them do that. How to help you manage them to do that. They say that if someone's not motivated and you're their manager, you're their coach, there's nothing you can do about that. I disagree. And I want to talk to you just through these simple points. First of all, if you want to um, have drive, you have to have a vision. It says in the Bible, without vision, the people perish. Einstein said, imagination is more important, more powerful than knowledge. Without a vision, and even you can call it a dream if you like, without a vision of where you want to go to, you can't have drive. You don't get in your car and not know where you're going. Well, I do in Seoul sometimes, but I try to know where I'm going. If you want to have success in life, if you want to have a drive and a hunger within you, you have to have a vision of where you want to go. It has to be a clear vision. It has to be something that you can imagine, that you can feel, that you can taste. You know what it's going to feel like when you do that. But you have to have a vision. Then you have to have a plan. Now most of us have a dream and we have an idea of what we need to do to do it. But we don't follow through on it. But a plan is different. A plan is the detailed breakdown of all the things we have to do in order to make this vision a reality. But then we have to have enough compelling reasons to make it happen. Most people have things they would like to do. Most people know what they would need to do to achieve it. But they've never within themselves been able to find enough reasons that make it something that they've got to do that they're desperate to do, that they're determined to do, that they're hungry to do. But you've got to then think about what would it actually be like to achieve that? What would it feel like? How would it affect my life? And what would happen if I don't achieve that? I learned this lesson very early on in sales. I was working away, I was doing reasonably well, and my boss came to me and said, what's your target at the moment? What do you bring in for the company? And it was maybe $10,000 a month of profit. And he said, well, Martin, that's good. If you would like, would you like to have a different car for your company car? And I said, yeah, for sure. And he said, well, I'm going to give you a brand new Mercedes. And I thought, wow, that's great. I'm really happy. And I said, what do I need to do to get this Mercedes? And he said, well, you need to go double your target for two months in a row, and then I'm going to give you this Mercedes. And I thought, forget it. It's impossible to do that. It's not possible. But then as I went and I was driving to soccer practice, football practice, driving to the gym, going out to the restaurant, and I was driving in this car that I didn't really like, I started to think, what would it be like to drive up here in the Mercedes? What would it be like to go here in this car? What would it be like when I'm going on these long road trips to have a bit more comfortable car? And I started to think about it, and I wanted it, and I had all these compelling reasons in my mind why I needed to, I needed to make it happen. And you know what? There it went. Two months in a row, double the target, which previously I, th I thought was impossible to achieve. It's amazing what drive can do. It's incredible if you have a vision of where you want to go, a plan of how you want to get there, and compelling reasons to make it happen, how you'll maybe not watch the television quite so much. How you maybe won't spend so much time texting. How you maybe won't set, spend so much time just reading through the newspaper, looking online. Because that's not really going to get you very far. And then you know what? There's another group of people who have had drive. Maybe it was the drive to get a new house. Maybe it was the drive to get a new car. Maybe it was the drive to have the clothes that they wanted. Maybe it was the drive to look a certain way and be in certain shape on their wedding day. And they had it. But then they don't have any motivation now because they're comfortable. 
But you're the talented people who can make a difference in the, in the world and you need to have drive in every area of your life in order to maximize your talent and your potential. A lot of you, and I'm speaking from my own experience, you've got to a point where you're comfortable. You've done well. Everybody else thinks you've done great. But you're so talented that you can do more. And it's time to refocus now, get a new vision, get a new plan, and come up with compelling reasons to make it happen. And that's going to be more difficult than it was when you had nothing. That's going to be more difficult than it was when you were just doing okay. But now you're doing quite well. It's going to be harder to find those compelling reasons. But you know one of the saddest things in life is hearing people talk about what they did 20 years ago. What they did 30 years ago. Maybe they did great things. But it's about what you're doing now. And I want to encourage you to think about that. Come up with what, you're, what you want to do. You absolutely can make it happen. You can. If you, uh, it, success isn't a chance thing. It's not a fluke thing. It doesn't just happen. It's intentional. People make the decision and they make the moves and they make it happen. So you can do that if you follow the same process. But what is it that you want to do? Remember as well that doing things for other people will probably bring you more joy than almost anything else you can do. If you've ever gone on a missions trip to Africa or if you've ever helped underprivileged kids, you'll have found that secret that not everybody knows, that when you go out of your way to do things for other people, you're getting much more back, much more back in return. And so I want to encourage you, just think for a minute. If you could do anything you wanted and you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? That's the starting point for your vision. The plan the plan is pretty easy because you can find people who can help you. But then the key is, can you find enough compelling reasons for you to make that dream a reality? And if you can do that, you'll have drive. If you can do that for other people, the people you manage, the people you work with, the people you, who work for you, they will have drive. And drive changes everything. Drive ignites the fire and it changes the way you go. It changes the tra trajectory of your path. And you can make that happen. And I believe that you wouldn't be here in this environment if you weren't the kind of person who cared about that. So that's a big, big positive. But I would encourage you also to refocus. Some of you have had dreams that you've given up on. Maybe it's time to revisit them. Follow the plan. Come up with enough reasons to make it happen. Come up with enough reasons that it's a big, big problem if it doesn't happen and stop living in the comfort zone. Thank you.